Hi, I'm Melina at 2017 CSPC, the Canadian Science Policy Centre. And with here, uh, here I have Dr. Mark Tainer, who is a professor at the University of Ottawa. He's also the founder of the Institute of Science, Society and Policy. Mark, thanks for being here with us. Can you tell us more about your work at the ISSP? Yeah, um, maybe I should start how the ISSP uh, was really conceived. Mm -hmm. So when the university decided to have an institute on science, society and policy, it was pretty obvious that we should make good use of the place in Ottawa to have mm -hmm. um, policy access, policy relevance, and that's also, I think, the reason the word policy exists in that institute. Um, in order to get the big picture together, we decided that we should not just focus on one aspect of science and society, we should cover the whole lot. And we did that by having one topic where we deal with evidence-based decision-making, so science for policy. Another group is more interested in science policy proper, so policy for science. And then a third group has more to do with technology governance, ethical aspects. And by having these three themes, so science for policy, policy for science and technology governance, we covered a lot and we were able to uh, pretty much get all the faculties across campus uh, interested. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the grand plan, that uh, it does not uh, you know, provide clear focus, but it provides a clear platform. So it is a platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, can you tell me about what sustainable interfaces you have, you can envision building between scientists and policymakers over the next 50 years in Canada? Yeah, sustainability is, is very tricky because we have um, evidence that a lot of scientific advisory mechanisms in Canada were not sustainable. So, I am um, looking at, f for example, the example of the Science Council of Canada or in the United States, the Office for Technology Assessment, which is still discussed in Canada and the US a lot. You know, people lament that it no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So the US has also that problem. Yeah. Um, I, th I think what we should try is uh, to go beyond national thinking and have a, perhaps a bi bilateral um, mechanism. Because if it's bilateral, like the International Joint Commission for Water Management, then it's much harder to, uh, to sack yeah. a unit for political it's a really reasons. really good idea. So that, that would be something one could try. And I see, um, well, NAFTA is still <laughs> somewhat alive. I see uh, <laughs> maybe the fact that we trade so much and that we need aligned regulations, yeah. that would be a starting point to argue that, for example, technology assessment could be done bilaterally yeah. and that could extend to other issues. And that's a great idea, bilateral mm -hmm. collaborations. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my next question is, how do you build trust between society and scientists? And how is this important to Canada's role in the global economy of innovation? Mm. Yeah, well, trust is, is pretty important. Uh, I mean, you start trust by having a relationship. Yeah. So the first thing you have to do is to actually build a relationship, which means you have to have contact. Mm -hmm. So some scientists should get out of the labs, and, and they do. I think increasingly so. So this is already on the way there's an interest in science communication so i think that that should continue um, but it's really a hard topic because the um, distrust in in some scientists has less to do with science than with kind of the collapse of the status of experts mm -hmm. and expertise we have the internet everyone is an expert and uh, so holding the knowledge used to be a privilege and uh, scarcity no longer scale so the value has declined how to go about this in the long run um, I think we just have to keep on working on it I don't have a, like a, the key you know on how to solve this problem I think as long as we have these issues around echo chambers etc we will um, will have problems to getting facts evidence heard mm -hmm. and as a result getting full support for, for all the scientists yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before we go, what do you think is the value of the CSPC? Well, the CSPC to me is just a great networking uh, event. I think that's the main value. I can see other, um, other functions, um, of course, lobbying for, for science, for the value of science is, is certainly a goal. 
But as an individual uh, coming from the university, for me, the main value is networking. And I think that's a very important value. I don't mm -hmm. find this a low level value. I find this a, a significant value. Yes. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And where can someone go to find out more about the ISSP? Well, you know, I just have to recommend uh, Google. The, uh, the, the, the um, ISP has a website. It is on Twitter. Oh, so cool. I would say start there. And uh, the same is probably true for many scholars. So Very progressive. No, no, no <laughs> other uh, approach there. Great. Thanks for being here and for coming to the CSBC. Thank you. Thanks, Alina. Thank you. <laughs>